my question is uh, what do you think about uh, the atmosphere now in the world um, which came along with the COVID crisis? Uh, governments are using and probably will continue to use this pandemic as a pretense for violating our human rights. Uh, we are also seeing that, uh, as in the case with Netherlands, protests about COVID curfews are happening. Uh, so what do you think about the future of human rights in the post-COVID era? era? Uh, will governments be more at ease with violating human rights? What, what are you studying, first of all? Uh, I'm a philosophy student as well. Sorry? Philosophy student. Okay. So I think COVID is a huge challenge for um, the human rights systems that we presently have. And by the way, Netherlands, my older daughter, who's 43 now, she's um, a Dutch citizen and she's living in Utrecht. And my two grandchildren, who are uh, 11 months and five years old, they are there with her in Utrecht. And my ex-wife, with whom I get on pretty well, lives in Amsterdam. So as you saw, the last two or three days, there have been big riots. I personally think the people rioting are the same kind of people who were storming the Capitol in Washington uh, a couple of weeks ago. That is, a lot of them are people who don't believe COVID exists. You know, many there are people around, probably in Turkey as well, who think that COVID is a government plot and they're fooling us that there's a disease like this uh, in order to get more control over us. There's also people who believe you should not have a vaccination and the vaccinations will inject you with some kind of material which will enable the government to read your thoughts. There are many such people. And in Britain, we have a lot of people who think that 5G uh, telecommunication masks give you COVID. You know, and I think the rioters in the Netherlands are predominantly those kind of people, by the way, are people who like getting into a fight. So if you saw the people who stormed the Capitol in Washington, they were extreme right-wing neo-Nazi, white supremacists, anti-vaxxers and that kind of people. So that's one issue. I think the issue though, I'm locked into my house and I can only go out for certain purposes. And I haven't seen my students in life since last uh, February. And you know everything is like this on, on Zoom. And I think there are all kinds of aspects of what's happening, and particularly in Britain, where we have, in my opinion, a government which is moving towards fascism, uh, where we have a minister of the interior called Priti Patel, who wants to bring back the death penalty in Britain, and wants us to leave the European Convention so that we can start hanging people again as we did until the early, until the middle of uh, the last century. And many of the things that the, go the government is doing, uh, by the way, lawyers are now in Britain, enemies of the people, according to the government. And so one of my colleagues was completely destroyed, had a nervous breakdown, his firm was bankrupted by the government. And that was because he was taking cases about Iraq, where Britain definitely was murdering and torturing people. And judges, the three senior judges in Britain, who are actually quite independent, they were on the front page of one of the most popular daily newspapers called the Daily Mail. And that's a paper which supported the Nazis before the Second World War. And they had a front page of the three top judges and the headline was enemies of the people because they were against Brexit. So, in Britain as well. I, I would say, you know, we have Netanyahu, Erdogan, Putin, Orban in Hungary, and Johnson in Britain. Really all populists and very dangerous for any kind of uh, human rights or civil liberties. So I think, to go back to your question, I think COVID is going to be the biggest challenge, actually, for lawyers who want to use these kinds of instruments and mechanisms um, for a good purpose. So, you know, 100,000 people dead, we, we heard yesterday in Britain. And it, it's presently the worst in the world. And that's 
because of deliberate policies of the British government uh, to let as many old people as possible die. It was called herd immunity. It means there would be much less work for care homes and that kind of thing. And it was murder, in my opinion, as a matter of fact, deliberate murder. And hoping that the young people would not get it or wouldn't get it so badly and then there would be general immunity. That was the government policy last year. So, and you see Johnson, uh, there was, um, I don't know if you ever see him on Turkish television or on the internet, and he announced have... yesterday that the 100,000 deaths, and his hair was all over the place. And so it's being asked on Twitter, why can't he comb his hair just once to tell people that there's 100,000 deaths? So there you go. <clears throat> I hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah, thank you. 